Okay, let's dive into this. If you're in the Flutterflow world, uh, your notifications have probably been going off. It's grown so much, hasn't it? From just a visual tool to, well, a pretty comprehensive development platform. And now they've just dropped some really big changes to their pricing and plans. We've got the official word here and also importantly, a lot of community feedback from the sources. So our mission today, let's try and unpack all this, figure out what's actually changing, why they say it's changing and you know what it means for you. Exactly. Flutterflow's position basically is that these changes reflect how much the platform has evolved. They're saying it's about aligning the plans better with team sizes and workflows um, and funding future development. Right. So fundamentally, what's the actual shift in the plan structure? So the old standard pro and teams plans, they're being retired. In their place, you've got new tiers, free individual growth and business. Enterprise stays as it was. And the timeline is, well, pretty quick. It's August 4th, 2025 for any new signups. If you're already a user, you get a heads up starting August 4th, like a 30 day window. You can pick a new plan then, or you'll be automatically moved over based on your usage come September 4th. Got it. Okay. Let's talk impacts. Starting with folks on the free plan, what changes for them? The big one for free users is a limit. You now get only two editable projects. If you have more, Flutterflow says they'll be archived, still accessible. The apps stay live, but uh, no more editing unless you upgrade. They're also losing that direct 1.1 support, but gaining more self-help resources and library imports, which is new for free. Okay. Now for the paid users, a lot of current standard, about $30 and pro $70 folks are looking at this new individual plan at $39. Price-wise, it's kind of a mixed bag, up for some, down for others. But the sources suggest the real sticking point is features, right? Oh, absolutely. This is where many people, especially former pro users, are feeling it. Key features from Pro just aren't in the new individual plan. Right. We're talking uh, direct GitHub sync, a big one for workflows. Also commenting for collaboration, those handy snapshot backups, automated tests, now just one per project, and dev environments, also limited to one per project on individual. Even the one-click localization aid is gone, though the core system remains. Flutterflow did clarify something important, though. If you already have, say, three dev environments set up on your old plan, those specific ones keep working, but you just can't add any new ones beyond the limit on the individual plan. Ah, okay. That's a key distinction. Grandfathering existing instances, but not the ability to create more. Makes sense. Now, collaboration in Teams, that sounds like a major overhaul too. Yeah, it is. Collaboration is now really tied to their team plans, growth or business. That old way of just sharing a specific project with someone outside a formal team, that's going away. And that's caused a lot of noise in the community feedback, especially for you know, freelancers and agencies working with clients. They, they could previously do that on cheaper plans. Now it seems you need a team plan. You can join multiple teams, though. And branching. Essential for managing bigger projects or features in parallel. Branching is primarily moving to the business plan. That's the $495 a month tier capped at five branches. And the community reaction points this out as a really steep jump. It hits not just big teams, but solo devs or small teams who use branching on, say, the old pro plan. Yeah, speaking of the community reaction, the sources show people have strong feelings. Definitely. There's some understanding about growth, sure, but also a lot of frustration. The main concerns popping up everywhere are that two project limit on free hindering learning. Pro users feeling like they're losing core features, GitHub sync, snapshots, commenting, and being pushed to much more expensive tiers. The branching cost, that $495 business plan, is seen as way too high for many. And freelancers worried about the new team structure making client work harder or pricier, plus some grumbling about losing direct support. Flutterflow has responded though, right? What are they saying in the sources? They have. They're acknowledging the feedback, clarifying a few things, like you can still do manual Git pushes and explaining the difference between the full localization tool set and the one-click helper that moved tiers. They're stressing mm. that they're listening. Okay. And for current users facing this change, what are their actual options during this transition? Right. So you can actively choose a new plan, and there's a discount for annual billing if you choose during that 30-day window. Or you can just wait and be auto-migrated based on what you currently use. You could also downgrade to free, but then you hit that two-project wall. Or, of course, you can export your code. And if you're on an annual plan now, you can get a prorated refund if you cancel during the transition. So for you listening, it really comes down to looking hard at how you use Flutterflow right now. Are features like branching or that old project sharing collaboration or frequent snapshots absolutely critical to your daily work? 
Exactly. You really need to check out those detailed plan comparison charts they've put out, see where your specific needs land in this new structure, and figure out the cost or maybe the workflow adjustments needed. And maybe a final thought to chew on, how could these changes really shift the Flutterflow community itself? Could we see it becoming, you know, less accessible for hobbyists or solo devs, pushing it more towards established, well-funded teams? And if so, what does that mean for the platform's future direction? Something to think about.